Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another inks comparison video, and this is my favourite brown inks comparison number one. So I think with that, let's go and swab up some of these inks. So I get a lot of questions on how I do these ink videos. So I decided I would add this to the front of each of the ink videos. I put links in the description, but I know some of you watch this on TVs or mobile devices, so you don't get to see this. So first off, the paper is the number one question I get asked. What paper do I use for these ink comparison videos? So this is the original Tomoe River. This is 52 GSM and it is the white not the cream the white where possible i try to go for the white because the cream can actually change the color of the ink just a little bit so this is tomoe river 52 gsm in the white um a lot of people get confused as well because i have what looks to be a grid on this page and it's actually an oxford optic pad these are the pads that i actually use when i'm writing my uh, writing samples for pen reviews or in my currently ink so they have these little squares up here uh, i just use that because it's a good guide for me when i put this very thin sheet of tomoe river over i can actually see squares so it helps me write a little bit sort of straight uh, on the page not always but sometimes it does the, the other thing that I also have is a I have a bottle of water, plain water, and uh, I dip my nib in here. So for consistency, I use the same fountain pen, or <laughs> I guess it's not a fountain pen. It's using a fountain pen nib, though. This is a 3D printed pen from William Shakur in the UK. So he prints this uh, material 3d and it has a number eight size bock nib which i can unscrew and you can see there so it is just a dip pen holder for a number eight size bock nib and the idea is i want to have consistency with the writing sample so i use this i dip it in the ink uh, I write and then I will dip it in here and I will rinse the nib off several times and I will dry it and then at that point uh, I will then go on to do the next ink swatch and the next writing sample. So there you have it, that's uh, how I do my ink swatches. So I just wanted to show you uh, that here. Now on to the ink comparison video. So the first ink I have here on this comparison today is Mont Blanc Toffee Brown. So we'll do an ink swatch. And this is quite a uh, lovely, uh, I would say chestnutty brown colored ink. Uh, very, very, very nice. Uh, we'll do a second pass over the top half here, just to show the difference between a wet and a broad or a dry or a narrow writing nib. And then the ink in here is Mont Blanc and it is Toffee Brown but this has been a favorite of mine for quite some time I do like chestnutty brown colors and this really for me just it's a solid brown so uh, if you like chestnut colored brown inks then this would be an ink to take a look at my next ink here is Akaman and it's SBRE brown and this is an interesting brown ink uh, depending on whether or not you have a wet or a dry nib uh, it or a broad or a narrow nib it can write very very differently so I will show you here by doing an ink swatch and this is a warm brown. Uh, I'd almost say it's an orange brown. It's actually quite nice. And uh, it is a color that I have really liked. So if I do a second pass over the top half, 
Hopefully we'll show the difference between a wet or a broad and a dry and a narrow writing nib. And this is Ackermann. And it is SBRE Brown. Uh, and it originally came out, I think, as just a diamine ink. Uh, then it came out as an Ackermann Dutch Masters and then a just a regular Ackermann 60ml bottle ink. Now, the next thing, I'm going to try and confuse you here because this is in an Ackermann bottle. And there's a good reason for this. I decided to decant uh, two of the 30ml plastic bottles and put it in a larger 60ml bottle. So I have it in here. Now, yes, that could be found to be creative accounting. and But it is a way that I do actually reduce some of the bottles of ink that I have in my collection. If I can find a bigger bottle to put several smaller bottles into, then I can reduce my ink collection, as well as writing with it. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Now, I actually think that this is, if not the identical, a very good comparison to SBRE Brown. We'll do a second pass over the top half, just to show the difference between a wet or a broad nib and a uh, dry or a narrow writing nib. So this is Diamine and it's Ochre. The next ink here is Diamine Chocolate Brown, which I have to say it's a little bit of a darker brown, but it's a brown that I have been liking a lot and I do like writing with. So it it does make it into my favorite list of brown inks. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And it is quite a uh, lovely dark chocolate color. We'll do a second pass over the top half, just to show the difference between a wet or a broad or a dry or a narrow writing nib. So this is uh, Diamine, and it's uh, Chocolate Brown. But this, I, I typically do find, is a little bit more closer to Mont Blanc Toffee Brown. But I do find that the writing sample, when it goes on wet, will be a lot more darker. The next ink here is KWZ Cappuccino. And I have to say that so far, like this is a, a new ink to, or fairly relatively new ink to my collection. It's been one I've been wanting for a while. I've been wanting some coffee uh, themed inks. And uh, I decided to get this one and I'm quite liking it. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And you can see it has that sort of lovely cappuccino kind of color. It's a lighter brown. We'll do a second pass over the top half just to show the difference between a wet or a broad and a dry or a narrow writing nib. So this is KWZ and it's cappuccino. But this has become a very good favorite of mine. And then the last ink here is an Ackermann Dutch Masters in that 120 milliliter bottle. It's a massive bottle, um, but this is Ackermann Dutch Masters and it is Haus Oud Bruin. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I would say that this is a little bit more of a, a khaki color. Uh, it's an interesting, it's a very, very light golden brown. We'll do a second half over the top half, just show the difference between a wet or a broad or a dry versus a narrow writing nib. So this is Ackermann. Dutch Masters, and it's Hows. Oud Bruin. 
but that is uh, again a an interesting brown it's just been one that that i have actually liked using quite a bit so i think let's take a look at these inks now that they have dried in a little bit so the first ink here is mont blanc toffee brown and this is a very nice dark brown almost chestnutty colored ink uh, can you see the difference between a wet and a dry nib? You can see a bit of a difference. Can you see shading? There's a lot of shading there. And if I bring it up close, you'll see there's quite a bit of shading here in the pooled area. Uh, is there any sheen? And I would say that it's certainly trying to sheen. There's a little bit of lighter sheen color around some of those pooled areas. Although it really is difficult with Mont Blanc toffee brown sometimes it will sheen sometimes it will not I typically don't see it on writing samples uh, but I have seen it on ink swatches in the past the next ink is Ackerman SBRE brown and uh, this is made by Diamine uh, it is a very nice light brown almost orangey yellow brown colored ink can you see the difference between the uh, wet and the dry sample here? Yes, you can. Uh, is there shading going on? There's a bit of shading going on here in that pooled area that you can see. Is there any sheen? Yes, there is a little bit of sheen around here and around the edges. So you can see a bit of sheen there. Uh, it's not a heavily sheening ink, but it is an ink that sheens a lot. Now, a lot of people have said to me that they can't get hold of Ackermann SBRE Brown because it's out of stock. And uh, I believe it's now back in uh, when I release this video. However, it can go out of stock quite quickly. The best thing that I've found that is closest to it is Diamine Ochre. Now, depending on, if you look at the two ink swatches here, you'll see that they're very, very similar. Diamine Ochre is a little bit darker, uh, although the dry writing sample here uh, is around about the same. So if you put it in a drier nib, it will be almost identical to Ackermann SBRE Brown. If you put it in a wet writing nib, then you are going to see a little bit more of a darker brown coming out on that writing sample. Can you see the difference between a wet or a dry writing nib? You definitely can. Again, like Ackermann SBRE Brown, it is uh, very different in how it looks. Is there shading going on? There is a little bit of shading going on in the pooled area there, and I'll show you here. Is there any sheen? Yes, and actually I would say there is more sheen there than Ackermann SBRE Brown. So if you either like this ink or you're having trouble getting hold of Ackermann SBRE Brown, then that certainly is an ink to try. Both inks are made by Diamine, and it's almost possible that they could be the same, if not almost the same, coloured inks. So I always find that Diamine Ochre is a very good uh, substitute for Ackermann SBRE Brown. The next thing here is Diamine Chocolate Brown and Chocolate. This this really is, I'd say, a dark chocolate. Uh, and I, I think really think Diamine should have called it dark chocolate instead. Can you see the difference between a wet and a dry writing nib? You can see a bit of a difference, but it's not a huge amount compared to maybe like the Ackermann SBRE Brown or the Diamine Ochre. Is there any shading going on? Well... Let me show you up close here. It's difficult to tell. Uh, there really isn't a lot of shading in, in the wet area. Is there any sheen? Now, yes, there is some sheen here. Um, and you will sometimes get sheen from Diamine Chocolate Brown. So uh, just be aware of that. If, if you want sheen, then go for the ink. If you don't want sheen, maybe it's an ink to avoid. The next thing here is KWZ Cappuccino. And this has very quickly become a favorite of mine. I'm really liking this, this ink. Uh, it's a slightly different tone of, of brown compared to, say, Ackermann SBRE Brown and Diamine Ochre. Likewise, compared to Mont Blanc Toffee Brown and Diamine Chocolate Brown. 
but it's a warming brown, uh, but not quite as warm as SBRE brown or Diamine Ochre. But it is an interesting brown. So can you see the difference between the wet and the dry? You definitely can. There's a huge difference there. Is there any shading going on? There is a little bit of shading here in the pooled area that you will see. Not a huge amount, but there is some. Is there any sheening going on? Yes, there is around the, again, the edges of that pooled area of ink. You are seeing some, but you're not seeing it on the writing sample, though. And then the last ink here is Ackermann Dutch Masters Household Brun. And this is an interesting brown. It's a light brown. It's uh, it's not a not what I would call a golden brown, uh, but uh, I'd, I'd almost call it a a gold colored brown or a um, maybe maybe even a khaki type color. So can you see the difference between a wet and a dry writing nib? You definitely can. There's a huge difference there. Um, can you see? any shading going on here yes you can uh there is a little bit here in the pooled area not a huge amount no uh is there any sheen going on uh i want to say yes there is around the edges here it's difficult to tell that there's definitely light patches but i'd say nothing that is really standing out sort of gold sheen type color so there you have it. That's my favorite brown inks comparison number one video. If you like any of these inks, then do let me know in the comments below. Likewise, if there are any other brown inks you'd like me to check out, then do let me know in the comments below. So that's my favorite brown inks comparison number one video. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.